Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Our group will present about introduction to roof construction on concrete. Okay, this is our group members which uh, consists of eight members. And this is the contents in our slides. First of all, we're going to explain about reinforced concrete roof slabs, concrete slabs, membrane roofing, age of concrete roof slab, reinforced concrete roof forms, and then precast concrete roof system, bearing connection, additional bearing connection, and the last one is roof flashing. Okay, concrete roof construction is divided by two, which are reinforced concrete roof slabs and precast concrete roof systems. And my name is Zukrina, and I'm going to explain a bit about reinforced concrete roof slabs. Okay, uh, form of a roof structure that use um, reinforced concrete slabs is flat roof. Okay, reinforced concrete roof slabs are formed and side cast in the same manner as concrete floor, which are one way slab, one way joy slab, two way slab and beam, two way waffle slab, two way flat plate, and also two way flat slab. Okay, roof slabs are normally covered with a type of membrane roofing. It may be supported by reinforced concrete columns, reinforced concrete frames, or bearing walls of reinforced concrete or mansory. Okay, a reinforced concrete may be designed and cast into a variety of other forms, which are folded plates, domes, and also shell structures. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So my name is Nasha Pika binti Zamanuddin, and I'm going to explain about two way reinforced slab. So. The two-way wafer slab is the most technical and economical type of roofs among conventional system, and the main element that we are using for the two-way wafer slab is the wafer form work. So it also made of reinforced concrete with concrete ribs running into two directions on its underside. Okay, we can see from two underside. Okay, from two directions, and it also preferred for spans greater than forty feet, which is twelve meters. Because they are much stronger than flat slabs, flat slab with drop panels, two way slabs, one way slabs, and one way joist slab. So this is the underside of a wafer slab, showing the grid like structure. Okay, and this is the section of a wafer slab, including beam, ribs, and column head. So we can get the advantages and disadvantages of two way wafer slab. Okay, so the advantages is. Better for building that require less vibration, and it has a bigger span can be achieved with less material, more economical, and environmentally friendly. So the pattern is also aesthetic. Okay, we can see it here. It's very aesthetic. Okay, and forms can be implemented with wood, concrete, or steel. So this advantages that we get from using the two ways purpose that is. The quantities of foam work material that I need is very high, and it can be because of that it is very cost, and it is preferred for flat topographical areas only, not for the slab areas. So next is the two-way flat plant. Okay, we can see at this picture. This is a two-way flat plant, and it's a concrete slab of uniform thickness reinforced in two or more directions, supported by Directly by columns, okay, columns without beams. There are no beams at here or girders. And simplicity of forming and some flexibility in color placement make flip flaps practical for apartment and hotel construction. So this is the two way flat flat details. Okay. So this is the tensile reinforcement. Okay, at here. And here is the measurement. Okay, it must be five inches to twelve inches, one hundred twenty-five to three hundred five slab depth. And rule of thumb for slab depth is pan over thirty two. And it is suitable for light left to moderate loads of relatively short spans of twelve inches to twelve twenty-four inch, which is three point six to seven meters. Okay, it's also shared at column locations governs the thickness of a flat plate. So this is the two-way flat pictures. The, the pictures. Okay, next is the two-way flat slab. Okay, it is a reinforced 
concrete of roof construction in which a two-way flat plate is supported by columns. Okay, by columns with drop panels or column capitals. A flat slab is a flat plate taken at its column. Here, okay. it's supposed to increase its shear strength and moment resisting capacity. The lot will be carried in both directions for two-way slabs. So this is the plan of the two-way flat slab. So this is the two-way flat slab tiles. Okay, it is also for tensor reinforcement. Okay, using the tensor reinforcement, and the measurement for this is six inches to twelve inches, which is one hundred fifty to three hundred five meters. Typical of slab depth and rule of thumb for slab depth is span over thirty six. Okay, so the draw panel is the portion of a flat slab taken around column. Had to increase its resistance to punching shear. So we can see at here. Yeah, is the minimum projection of drop panel is zero point twenty five times slab thickness. Okay, so for this one is the minimum width of drop panel is zero point thirty three span. And at here is the column capital may be used in place of or. In conjunction with a drop panel for increased shear resistance. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Koshrin with Jamaluddin, and I'm going to present about the member roofing for both uh, construction, reinforced concrete roof slabs, and for precast concrete uh, roof system. So uh, normally, um, the roof slabs are covered with a type of member roofing, which is uh, shown in this uh, section. So the function of the roofing membrane is the waterproofing layer of the roof. So, um, but first, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about uh, the roof uh, flat roof assemblies. So it contains, it includes the wear cores. Uh, it protects the roofing from uplift, uplifting wind forces and mechanical uh, abrasion. And then we have a roofing membrane, which is the waterproofing layer of the roof, rigid form or lightweight concrete insulation for thermal insulation, vapor retarder. It's for uh, impedes or blocking the passage of water vapor into the roofing uh, assembly and then we have smooth travel finish to receive uh, insulation and roofing and the last level we have the concrete uh, roof slabs the reinforced or the precast there are two major types of member roofing systems which are built up roofing systems and also single ply uh, roofing systems for the build-up roofing, uh, it uses a build-up roofing aggregate, or we can call it as a black course applied of gravel slag or marble chips that uh, aids in a softening membrane and resisting wind blow off. It also have a surface surface in between of colta or asphalt, and then we have the aggregate for the uh, drainage uh, layer. And then we have the roofing membrane, thermal insulation, vapor retarder, and then the last level for the concrete uh, roof slab. So, so for the build-out roofing, uh, precast concrete must have uh, all joints that are uh, rooted. So any unevenness between the units must be uh, level with a canted topping or fill so it uh, blocking uh, or it's uh, avoid the moisture or thermal insulation uh, problem and then we have the single ply roofing uh, systems it applied in liquid or sheet form so uh, one of the example of sheet form is it is thermoplastic membranes uh, PVC which is polygonal chloride or polymer modified bitumens or EPDM which is ethylene propylene gene monomers 
So there will be three types of single pyrophy systems, uh, which is fully adhered system, mechanically fastened, loose eight ballasted system, and then uh, for the installations, um, we must consult with roofing manufacturer for the approval types of slab installation details and any internal and moisture insulation. Next, we have the one of the example video of the roof member waterproof insulation um, installation. And then um, for the member roofing uh, slope, it must be sloped at least one centimeter per foot to transport rainwater to the roof drains by adjusting the height of the beams that support the roof deck, placing a tapered field of insulating lightweight concrete over the roof deck, or installing tapered panels of rigid form insulation over the roof deck. So there are diff there are different uh, level or uh, different slopes. We have a flat uh, slope, low slope, common slope, steep slope, and also uh, extreme slope. So basically, um, concrete uh, roof system is a flat slope, but it depends on the requirement of the building whether they want to use a flat slope or um, steep slope. Next, we have the edge of roof slab for reinforced concrete roof slabs uh, construction. Um, the edge of a concrete roof slab uh, may be treated in three different ways. The first one is upturned edge beam, overhang, and the last one is for the support of non-bearing curtain wall. The first one is the upturned edge beam. It can form as a parapet uh, wall. And then we have a metal rig that may be that may be cast into the parapet to receive uh, cap flashing. Next, we have the cantilevered. So the step can be cantilevered beyond its perimeter to support uh, to form an overhang. And the last one is the support non-bearing curtain wall. It is an edge or spender beam that can support a non-bearing curtain wall. We also have the metal anchors made because into the spender beam to secure the curtain uh, wall panels. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Simon Ferhaim Bey Muhammad Virus. Uh, now I'm going to talk about roof forms for reinforced concrete roof slabs. This is my overview. First, we are going to explore folded plate structure and the second one is dome structure and the last one finally is shell structure folded plate structures is an, uh, an assembly of flat plates or slabs inclined in a different direction is it as if it's going in a zigzag rhythm joined along their longitudinal edges uh, modern folded plate structures are typically made of cast in situ or precast reinforced concrete and it can provide a multitude of shapes and overall forms so we have three here which are prismatic pyramidal and prismoidal so prismatic is the rectangular plates um, and then the pyramidal is non rectangular plates or pyramid and then uh, prismoidal or triangular or trapezoid trapezoid 
plates. <laughs> Such a system is capable of carrying loads without the need for additional um, supporting beams along mutual edges. Each plan uh, or the flat surface here is called plan act as a beam in longitudinal direction. There, this one. And then transverse strips behave as a continuous um, beam supported at full points. This one. This is the transfer strips. And then the vertical diagrams are rigid frames stiffen a folded plate against the formation of the fold profile. This is the vertical diagrams. Uh, and and we can conclude that stiffness of the cross sections enables for the place to span relatively long distances. And now we jump into dome structures. Is a spherical, spherical surface structure having a circular plan and constructed of stacked block and circular rigid material like reinforced concrete. Similar to rotated arc, except that Circum circumferential forces are developed. Um, compressive, compressive near the crown and tensile in the lower portion. Now we're going um, more detail about the forces in dome. Um, we have meridional forces, forces, hook forces, uh, and the transition from compressive hook forces and tensile hook forces. Meridional forces are always um, compressive under full vertical loading. This. Um, hook forces restraining the out of plane movement of the meridional strips in the shell of a dome. Um, it's going a um, different way from the meridional. Um, it compressive in the upper zone, tensile in the lower zone. Transition from compressive hook forces and tensile hook forces. Um, here, it is around 45 and 60 degrees. And then we have tension ring. Tension ring encircles the base of a dome to contain the outward components of the meridional forces. Um, ring is thickened and reinforced in a concrete dome to handle the bending stresses caused by the differing elastic deformation of the ring shell. Types of reinforcement of domes, we have three here um, in the book The Kitchen. Um, they stated Shadler domes, lattice domes, and geodesic domes. Um, Shadler domes follow the line of latitude uh, and longitude and it's a set of diagonals completing the triangula triangulations. Um, lattice domes. Next is lattice domes. Follow the circles of latitude and two sets of diagonals forming a series of isosceles triangles. Um, the difference between the shadow uh, and lattice is that eh, yeah, is that gosh Thank you. <coughs> Types of reinforcement of domes. So we have three here, and they are Schwedler domes, lattice domes, and geodesic domes. First, Schwedler domes is um, they follow the line of latitude and longitude, and a third set of diagonals completing the triangulations. And then we have lattice domes. Follow the form. Follow the circles of latitude and two sets of diagonal forming a series of isosceles triangles. So the difference here are um, the, the difference between Shadler and Lattice here are the Shadler used diagonals, just one diagonals, and Lattice uses two diagonals uh, which they uh, which forms um, isosceles triangles. And now we have geodesic domes. Um, we follow three principal sets of great circle intersecting at 60 degree series of equilateral triangles. Basically, okay. Now we jump onto the shell structures. Shell structures is thin curved plate structures typically constructed of reinforced concrete. It is shaped to transmit applied forces by membrane stresses. 
I mean, they are compressive, tensile, and shear stresses acting on the plane of their surfaces. It is also can sustain relatively large forces if only um, uniformly applied. Because of its thinness, it has little bending resistance, and because of that, it is unsuitable for concentrated loads. And here we have three pictures of um, the green examples of what we can do with this shell structures method um, with reinforced concrete. And so this is the process of um, how we are going to create uh, shell structures, the roof so uniquely like this uh, three pictures here. So it started with um, barrel. Um, it is a cylindrical shell structures. Um, if length is three times the transverse span, it behaves as a deep beam with a curved section spanning in the longitudinal direction. So this, if relatively short, it is as an arc like action. Tire rods are transverse rigid here frames are required to counteract the outward thrust of the arcing action. And then um, the trans translational surfaces. Translational surfaces is a process of parallel to this parabolic or um, hyperbolic paraboloid. So trans translational surfaces means generated by sliding a plane curve along or straight line or over another plane. Hyperbolic um, paraboloid here is a surface generated by sliding a parabola with downward curvature or straight line um, segment with its end on two skew lines. And then um, we have set of surfaces. We have an upward curvature in one direction. Um, regions of downward curvature behave as a cable structure. If edges are of the surfaces are not supported by by anything by the roof, it might put beam behavior. My name is Fatin and I'm going to present about the precast concrete in the system. So precast concrete is a form of concrete that is prepared, cast, and cured inside visually in a controlled factory environment using reusable molds. Precast concrete slabs beams and structural teeth are one way spanning units. The precast units are manufactured with normal density or structural lightweight concrete and pre-stress for greater structural efficiency which results in less depth, reduced weight and also longer spans. So this is the precast concrete units. The precast concrete elements can be joined together to other elements to form a like a complete structure. So we have the precast slabs and also the precast beams and girders. So moving on, we have the first one is we have the solid flat slabs, um, which is the typical width is uh, about four inches. And then we have the hollow core slabs, um, which have the holes in the middle and uh, this is the sizes which are uh, with a span range about 2.6 to 12 meters. And then we have the single teeth with a span range about uh, 9, to 6, 9 to 36 meters. And then we have the double teeth with a span range about uh, 9 to 13 meters. And then we have the rectangular beams um, with a span range from 4.5 to 22 meters. Also the same span range with the L-shaped beams and also inverted T beams. And we also have H2 girders. Um, H2 uh, stands for American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. The Skirdis is designed originally for bridges structures, but 
sometimes used in buildings construction. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'm going to present about rearing connection. So my name is I'm Simba Mamarasi. My material number is 2016 391. Okay, note precast concrete roof system are similar in form and construction to precast floor systems and use the same types of slabs in it. So at the picture, the top of it is the roofing membrane membrane of a grid insulation. And the above it is the side cast concrete topping reinforced with welded wire fabric or reinforcing bars bond to bonds to the precast slabs to form a composite structural structure unit 5 cm minimum of thickness. The topping may be omitted if rigid foam insulation is laid over smooth surfaced precast unit. At your left hand side, here is the bearing. The bearing connection should allow for limited horizontal movement, movement due to creep, with shrinkage and tem temperature changes. And the bottom is the, to serve as a horizontal diaphragm and transfer lateral forces to shear walls. Steel reinforcement must tie the precast steps units to each other over their supports and at their and bearings bearing wall okay precast hollow cop slab unit is located at the top of it and below it is the extend steel towels into reinforced concrete topping or into grotted shear case for structural continuity okay next growth voids at as at ends of hollow cause unit and in the middle of the bearing with the walk with the with the hollow core units is the high density plastic bearing strips. Minimum bearing length should be at least one per one hundred and eighty of the clear span, but not less than five cm five centimeter for solid or hollow core slabs. Okay. Next is the the first one is the weld weld between the um between the wall and precast structure T. Next is synthetic rubber bearing pad to connect with the bearing with the structure T. Minimum bearing left should be at least 181 per 180 of the clear span but not but not less than 7.5 cm for beams or stamped members. And wall. Okay, at the top is the reinforced concrete topping with the 5 cm minimum of thickness. At the below it is hooked bars cast into slab edge slots which is 10 cm. And the bottom is the underside of precast slabs may be caulked and painted. The ceiling, the ceiling finish may also be applied to or be suspended from slab. Okay, next, uh, the top of it is a reinforced concrete topping bonds T units together. In the middle is the solid fill glazed opening, and last one is the reinforced concrete or imaginary wall. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Frazim, and I will present about additional bearing connection. So the problem faced in precast concrete slab is firstly floor slab essentially consists of a compression joint in the bearing surface. The bearing length should be at least 75 mm to avoid the spalling. So the the problem faced is mostly spalling in the precast concrete slab. So the firstly the connection in hollow core slab is the f the problem with hollow core slab is that there is no projecting reinforcement in the slab, so it requires a frictional tie. So the first step to connect hollow core slab with the beam is set hollow core slab on bearing pad on precast beam. Next, uh, it ready to receive side bars which are projecting from the beam. After that, the joint grotted solid 
and so lastly the gap at the end of the slab and the beam filled by concrete so the connection in double T slab is the time force in the double T slab is provided in the temporary situation by welding two plates together it prevents the beam and the slab spreading during the in-situ concrete screening operation so the step in doing the double T slab is firstly a rubber bearing is placed at the support point next when the slab is in position a welded connection is made then the reinforcement is placed onto the top of the slab as it should lap with the projecting bars and lastly in situ concrete is poured Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Nur Hanina and my metric number is 2016032 and I will present to you the concrete parapet under the roof flashing topic So uh, let us first know what is flashing. Flashing refers to thin continuous pieces of sheet metal or other impervious material installed to prevent the passage of water into a structure from a joint or angle. Uh, you can see from the right picture where there is metal sheeting um, at the roof that is actually function to prevent water a ring to enter the structural elements inside the buildings. So the most common material used for flashing are aluminium, copper, and stainless steel. So this material is actually chosen uh, based on the climate and structural requirements. So, uh, so there is a lot of flashing needed in a building. So uh, for example, uh, at the roof, like I mentioned before, and the roof penetration, such as chimneys, roof drains, vent pipes, and skylights. Uh, windows and door openings also need flashing. Uh, floors and wall intersections, intersection between roofs and vertical surfaces, um, the places where the building meets the ground, and also expansion joints and other breaks in the building skin. So, um, Let's move on to concrete parapet. So from the picture on the right side, you can see the neon green arrow uh, uh, pointed at this um, side at the side of the roof, and that is actually the roof uh, concrete parapet. So the concrete parapet is the extension of wall at the edge of the roof, terrace, balcony, and other structures. So. The function of this uh, construction ma construction method is actually to prevent from fire, fire spreading and also for safety measures because uh, it can prevent people from doing uh, things like um, jumping off the roof and uh, to prevent any other uh, things happening such as the falling down or any other things like that. So that is what one of the reasons why concrete parapet um, is done. And for the fire safety measure is that it can prevent spreading of fire, especially at the terrace houses, um, where roof, a concrete parapet at the roof can prevent the fire as the wooden trusses is not connected to the uh, concrete parapet. So the fire will stop right there and will not spread. So for this is the cross section of the concrete parapet, uh, where you can see that the, there is a flashing at the base, where this is the flashing at the base. And the other elements such as cap or counter flashing is function to uh, make the water droplets and the rings to move uh, downward uh, follows the gravity uh, and also to prevent the staining at the parapet wall so the advantages and disadvantages of parapet roof so like i mentioned before the advantages is fire protection where a house parapet uh, roof 
burns only one room. The wooden trusses are not linked, so fire will not pass through the parapet. So, and the second one is windbreak. So, wood covering on buildings with parapet beams are not easily blown away. So, it is better to have wood parapet on a windy climate. So, for the disadvantages, um, if the parapet walls are not properly um, built or maintained, uh, the roof will leak. So for the second one, it is costly because um, the extension of doing this parapet wall causes uh, is expensive, and it is also a high level of expertise is required. So um, sometimes people do use parapet roof as a design. So some, uh, so it is quite costly for some buildings, and it is um, needed um, a high level of, of expertise. So that is also one of the reasons why it is costly. So I think that is all for me. Thank you so much.